So Young's levels of experiment was justified by interpreting the light as a wave. But one really interesting uh, and slight modification we can make is by reducing the intensity of the light that we use all the way so that only a single photon of light is directed at the double slits, okay? So Young's double slit experiment gave us evidence that light was a wave. The photoelectric effect suggested that maybe light was a particle or a photon. And because it's only a single photon, we would expect that it either goes through the left slit or the right slit, but not both, okay? And if there's only one photon going through one of the slits, then we would expect that it has nothing else to interfere with because there's no other light photons. So if it has nothing to constructively and destructively interfere with, it shouldn't be able to produce a diffraction pattern on the screen, at least according to us. But does this actually happen? Well, as it turns out, when we actually perform this experiment, we slowly, gradually, begin to see an accumulation of photons in positions that look remarkably like bright and dark bands. In fact, if we um, perform this experiment for long enough, we get, eventually, just a normal diffraction pattern like we were doing with Young's double-slit experiment. So this experiment provides evidence for the dual nature of light. On one hand, we have these photons, which are very particle-like in their nature, but when we send them through the double-slit, they actually end up forming a diffraction pattern, just like we would observe if light was a wave. Okay, so here we have a particle exhibiting almost wave-like properties. So this is one kind of very informally explained way of demonstrating that light, and in fact matter as well, has a dual nature. It can behave as both a wave and as a particle. I don't need recognition. I'm on a mission. Yeah. I'm paying dues. Yeah. I'm in position.